I'm back everyone, and once again we're going over some more strange looking Godzilla VHS art. I've got a ton to go through here, so let's dive in. And how about we start with everybody's favorite Godzilla movie, Godzilla's Revenge, or All Monsters Attack, whichever you choose to call it. Let's start with this one put out by Paramount, and drawn by Greg Winters, the same guy who did the artwork on various Mega Man covers in the West. At a glance, this one doesn't look all that bad, but once your mind actually processes what you're seeing, you'll begin to notice the flaws. Of course, Godzilla has a big green dino look, spitting out fire like a dragon, instead of using his trademark atomic breath. I won't bring that up all the time, but just know that a lot of these have that issue. Godzilla's design seems to be a mishmash of the 1967 and 1984 suits. The Kamakuras and Manila are drawn pretty nicely, including the batch of characters down here who don't appear in this movie. Like really, this is the film where the kid is the main lead, and you don't even include him on the cover, instead make way for the random exilian down here. Despite the flaws, the art is actually really nice looking. I mean, it's at least a masterpiece compared to this one put out by Scimitar. Yuck. I'll give it this though, it at least presents the idea of what you're to expect from this movie, with Manila and Ichiro going around Monster Island watching Godzilla beat up other kaiju. Personally though, I wouldn't want art found in a kindergarten coloring book gracing my home media. However, Scimitar would get a second chance to redeem themselves on this. In 1998, they released a handful of Godzilla movies to eat off the hype of the upcoming American-made Godzilla film, and got artist Peter Bullinger to make the covers. And, well, yeah, this one looks miles better than whatever this was. We'll get to most of the Scimitar releases at certain points in this video, and you'll notice that they all have this uniform style to them, with the title monsters drawn over a textured background. The artwork for Godzilla's Revenge looks nice, and I really like the added detail of Manila's smoke rings here. I guess the only complaint I have with this one is that, once again, Godzilla 84 was used for reference instead of using an image of the actual Godzilla shown in this film. Well, to be fair, there's like three different Godzilla suits used in this movie, so I'll give it a pass on that. How about we go over some Terror of Mechagodzilla covers, starting with this one from Paramount. Now, your ears did not deceive you. I did say Terror of Mechagodzilla, and that is what the title says up here. But upon just glancing at the piece, you'll recognize immediately that this artwork was meant for Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, the previous Godzilla movie to this one. So obviously there was some confusion when coming up with this artwork. But overall the art isn't bad. All the characters in Kaiju have this cartoony look to them here, and in combination with the coloring really helps this piece pop out from the shelves. I do have three nitpicks though. First, Kunigami now looks like the old man from the Zelda game, instead of what he's supposed to look like in the film. Second, all the monsters are pretty on model to how they look in the movie, except for Godzilla. It looks as though the artist used the 1984 picture for reference, instead of using anything from the actual movie. And of course he's got green skin as most of the advertisement tends to give him. And third, Mechagodzilla now has eyes, and by that I mean he has irises and pupils. It just looks freaky on him. This next VHS comes from Vision Film, featuring both Mechagodzilla and Titanosaurus just standing around. Wow, really, really exciting. Moving on to this one put out by Manga Home Video, the front has a random headshot of the animatronic Godzilla used in 1984, instead of using anything from the actual movie it's supposed to be promoting. I mean, what a nice choice using one of the more frightening Godzillas to represent one of the more friendlier looking ones. Okay, now you're probably thinking there is no way this is a Godzilla cover. And you're right, it isn't one. But that sure didn't stop the company called Magic Home Video for releasing it as one, and giving it the very interesting title choice, After Holocaust. How do you go from Terror of Mechagodzilla to that? Also, who's the robot man here? I get there's a cyborg in the movie, but let's just say she certainly doesn't look like this. Apparently this image was taken from another movie called Psy Warrior. Boy, what an easy job this editor must have had. Just take a poster from a random movie and slap it on another random movie to sell in stores. No shame to be had here at all. 
The company called Columbus had also done the same thing to this movie, even giving it that odd title. And once again, not using an image from the actual film, but instead showing a bad dude holding some heavy artillery, with a babe just pouring herself all over him. Oh, I'm sure this didn't confuse anyone who bought this back in the day. This next one put out by Video Films at least has an image that kinda represents the movie, even if it looks like an R-rated version of it. But that's not a bad thing, this is awesome. That imposing shot of Mechaji over the crimson red sky, with the mech just staring down at the demonic looking Godzilla and Titanosaurus, right on the bottom here causing explosions. And is Godzilla's name written in blood? I mean, this is an awesome shot, but what kind of movie did they think this was? We've now come to the Scimitar release, and the art here is mediocre. I like how the red background makes the two pop out, and I like how Godzilla's breath shines off Mechagodzilla's space titanium, but that's really the only praise I can give this one. Godzilla again has the green dinosaur look with the little wimpy fire breath, yada yada yada, we get it. But this has to be one of the worst Mechagodzillas I've ever seen drawn. It's like the artist just stared at the mech for like 5 seconds and had to draw him from memory. It looks like the back of its head is like the back of a Darth Vader helmet. Let's traverse over into some Ghidorah tapes, starting with this one from Mountain Video, featuring the goofiest looking version of the kaiju I've ever seen, holding a blurry picture of Godzilla for some reason, for kids only, stamped right on the box, as if to shame any adult who chooses to watch this movie. Hey, what are you watching? Oh, uh, Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster. <laughs> what are you, five years old? <laughs> Boy, they really got us there. Anyway, this next one put out by Video Treasures features Godzilla as if he just walked off of Sesame Street, witnessing in shock King Ghidorah battling a stone caterpillar shooting a laser beam at him. Oh, and Rodan's just there. Yep. Now, I'm only doing VHS art in this video, but I couldn't help but include this. What you're staring at here is the cover for the 8mm film copy, and as you can plainly see, it features a wingless quadruped Ghidorah shooting fire beams at Godzilla and Rodan. It's interesting that a quadruped Ghidorah was realized many years later before Desk Ghidorah and Kaiser Ghidorah came out. At least I think it is. I'm sure someone will point out an earlier example than this. Here's a tape put out by Video Images, featuring King Ghidorah on the front cover, naturally made out of rice and jelly beans, and complete with rainbow wings. Boy, the artist really nailed the character on this one. And yeah, before anyone writes it, I already know about the rainbow wing thing. Anyway, let's look at the sequel now, Monster Zero or Astro Monster, whatever you prefer to call it. Let's start with this one by Scimitar. Godzilla looks a little off on this one. I mean, his pose doesn't really sell me that he's given a mighty roar. Instead, it looks like he's backing up in shock going, Gah. Ghidorah, on the other hand, looks really awesome. He has sort of a demonic space dragon look here. I really like the design here. I wish it would see a full version of it. But let's look at our earlier Scimitar release, done by the same guy who gave us these gems. And you know, I'll give the artist credit here. They at least have some knowledge of what these movies are, and does illustrate some form of accuracy to the film. I mean, it's not the greatest looking art piece out there, but it's not the worst one either. Another problem with these is that they have some really ugly color choices. Like, nothing complements anything here. I mean, Planet X didn't have a bright yellow sky with pink saucers flying around. Now here's an example of a better art piece, put out by Paramount and illustrated by Greg Winters. It is night and day when compared to the last one. The kaiju are drawn so much better here, and oh my god, they actually got Godzilla's breath right. I'm honestly stunned by that alone. But I guess they had to make up for it by giving Ghidorah a fire breath. Of course, right, because this really looks like fire to me. I also like how accurately the people are drawn down here. I don't understand why characters from Rodan's movie are here, but whatever. Here we have this gem put out by Siren Entertainment. This is official, everyone. This is official. Out of all the shots they could have chosen to represent this movie, this is the one that caught someone's eye. Someone really looked at this and went, oh, what a majestic shot. This is worthy of making the front cover. Upon digging into more Siren's releases, I stumbled across these magnificent covers as well. I mean, did a computer choose a shot in the film at random, and the team behind that went, Welp, looks like we're using this as the cover, no questions asked. This is seriously the bottom of the barrel when it comes to making these covers. I mean, you might as well just have a black background with Godzilla's face on it, being struck by lightning with a title logo. It at least has more creativity than this. Siren must have learned from their dumb choices, as they actually re-released some of their earlier Godzilla movies with original artwork. 
like destroy all monsters here. I wish I could find a better image of this one because it looks kind of cool. But they also re-released this one for Monster Zero. I mean, what kind of pervert came up with this one? It has this innocent looking Godzilla being thoroughly examined by this creepy Ghidorah head here. I mean, look at the two heads up here. They know they ain't up to no good. I mean, really, they couldn't come up with a striking battle pose or anything? Anyway, how about we move on to some Mothra vs. Godzilla ones now. Starting with this one put out by Filmax Home Video. This is another one that's not too bad. Mothra has some nice detail on her up here, minus the large fangs and the bird beak. And Godzilla has an anime-esque design to him down here, which isn't bad, but doesn't really represent what he looks like in the movie. This next one put out by Paramount, and another Greg Winters illustration, has this awesome shot of Godzilla and Mothra battling near Infant Island, which never happens in the movie. Mothra looks spectacular here, but Godzilla on the other hand... no. I mean it's an okay rendition of him, but it's not really a good representation of how he looks in the movie. I just don't know why these artists have to branch out and draw Godzilla the way they think he looks, instead of just using, I don't know, reference to get the look right. I mean if they can make the other monsters look accurate, then how come they can't do the same for Godzilla? What the hell is this? This is legit? Apparently so from Hollywood House Video, who apparently didn't even look at a single image from this movie. Hmm, Godzilla? That's a dinosaur, right? Just slap this thing on the cover and call it Godzilla. Wow, they couldn't even put the effort into making this come together. Wait, what's this? Godzilla, Hulk lizard with charlotte breath and decimal shrieks, battles Mothra, the monster moth. That's an A-plus description if I ever saw one. I mean, what if this was Hedera's movie? What was it gonna say? Hedera, the monster head. I also like this down here. King Kong, step aside. Godzilla vs. The Thing. I mean, just wonderful, right? They put more effort into getting Charlie Chaplin's blurry face down here than they did on getting Godzilla on the cover. This next one put out by Studio Canal is... Yeah. I mean, what the hell happened here? Was Microsoft Paint the only option to string this one together? Not only did they put the wrong Godzilla on here, but they removed his dorsal plates for some reason. I guess that was asking too much to leave in. I mean, this is MS Paint after all. Anyway, we move on to our Scimitar release. The monsters here have a unique look to them, with both Kaiju looking a bit on the pudgy side, and Bollinger really bringing out the insect features on Mothra. I don't have much to comment on here, it's an okay one. But I do have things to say about this atrocity, with this god-awful rendition of Godzilla with a derp face, shooting his PNG image at Mothra, who looks like a ticked-off pill with vampire fangs. And they couldn't even get the title right. This isn't Megalon, this is Mothra. Right? Oh god, this is actually a tape for Megalon. Yeah, someone actually screwed up bad on this one. But forget that, we're finally on Megalon now? Oh boy. Now it's no surprise to many that this is the one Godzilla movie that has received many crappy home releases in the VHS era. But why is that? While I don't know the whole story, I did find out that CinemaShares, the company that distributed this movie in America, didn't properly include a copyright notice on the film before they released it. You know, those little icons you see under the title or somewhere in the credits? Because of that blunder, many back alley VHS companies believed Godzilla vs. Megalon was up for grabs in the public domain. So they didn't have to deal with Toho or anyone involved on this movie. Thus releasing a ton of crappy releases. The comedy TV show Mystery Science Theater 3000 also took advantage of this and had an episode where the gang were mocking the picture. I can't believe it, Wally Carbo! Godzilla is either breaking the law of physics or he's throwing around an empty rubber suit! Toho would eventually get this problem resolved in the years to come, thus halting any companies from re-releasing the film and even pulling the Godzilla episodes off the Mystery Science releases. There's a little more to the story here, but we're here to look at VHS art, not get a history lesson. So let's move on to our next Megalon tape. This one put out by Front Row Entertainment features a giant green Godzilla dwarfing both Megalon and Gigan over what looks to be a fiery city. Way to make Godzilla's threatening adversary look very imposing here by standing by his leg. I also gotta point out that someone gave Robert Dunham top billing here. As if that's really gonna be a selling point for this movie. Like some guy out there is just gonna be picking this one up and going, Oh, I can't wait to watch the new Robert Dunham movie. No hate towards the actor, by the way. I'm just making a dumb joke. Okay, so I mentioned in the first VHS video that I've opted to talk about the official Toho VHS releases in Japan. Because for the most part, 
apart, there's nothing really wrong with them. Except for this jarring Megalon one they strung together. Like, Toho, really? Anyone who's seen the film knows that Godzilla is shaking our man Jet Jaguar's hand here. I dare say it's the most iconic shot from the movie. But for whatever reason, someone thought it would be a creative idea to just take the most basic Megalon image that everyone has seen before and layer it on top of Jet Jaguar. So it looks like the two kaiju are fighting, or shaking hands, or whatever's supposed to be going on here. Though this cover may be awkward, it at least has Megalon on the cover, which is more than I can say from what these people did. I mean, these are prime examples of companies who just do not care. Oh, it's a Godzilla film? Well, we'll just put Godzilla in a generic city on the front. What does it have to do with the title? Who cares? People knows it's Godzilla. But believe it or not, they can get much worse than this. Like just throwing random images from other Godzilla movies on the cover. Boy, what love and attention got put into these ones. Vision Entertainment's release. Well, here's at least something that represents the movie. A shot of Jet Jaguar. It's neither Godzilla nor Megalon, so it's just kind of awkward he's standing there with a title over him. I mean, if someone who has no knowledge of the franchise picks this up and looks at it, they're going to think JJ here is one of the titular monsters. And what's up with this? Monster against monster for the lost continent of Mew? Where did they pull that out of? AVO Films release. Well, okay, you got me there, guys. Is the Jurassic Park-style raptor supposed to be Godzilla or Megalon? Actually, no, I forget about that. Are we in the desert? Are we even on planet Earth? And what's up with the burnt film reel of a jet flying over a planet? Did actual freaking aliens make this cover? Nightmare release. I mean, there's just too much to talk about on this one. Why a yellow city? Who's the reptilian style tail go to? And what's this guy even staring at? Well, the dinosaur, of course. But he can't be considering the dino is supposed to be behind the building. You see how the tail is purposely matching the silhouette? I get it makes no sense because a shadow can't be casted on top of a building from behind the building. But that's how it's being represented here. Because notice how the shadow is not leading from the ground on onto the structure. It starts on the building. Now I get what they were going for here, but clearly the gears in the artist's head weren't turning in the right direction when drawing this. Hold on, what have we got down here? Watch this movie at your own risk. Do not watch it when you are alone. A chilling horror classic? Are you kidding me? When you think of classic horror films from the 70s, what do you think of? Chainsaw Massacre, Halloween, Alien, Godzilla vs. Megalon. It just seems to fit naturally right up there with those, doesn't it? UAV Entertainment. Guys, I don't know if this may come to a shock to anyone, but this is the best cover of these so far. I'm not even kidding on that. The cover is colorful, action-packed, and just really pleasing to look at. They even did Godzilla's breath right on here. And even Jew is back glowing when he uses his breath. It's a little detail that often gets ignored in these. Again, I wish they wouldn't make Godzilla look bigger than his foe. It just kind of takes away the tension of how threatening they're supposed to be here. But overall, this is a wonderful looking cover. I think it's the same artist who also did this fantastic looking Mecha Godzilla cover, also put out by UAV. I didn't talk about this one in the first video because it's just not bad. It's another beautiful looking art piece. Yeah, they're not using the right Godzilla here, but that's just my nerdy brain nitpicking. But let's end this Megalon stuff off with UAV's earlier release. Boy, sure puts that first one to shame, doesn't it? I mean, you got Meatwad returning again to portray Godzilla, battling an angry green Megalon that looks to be balding by dragging him into frame. And like our previous entry, this one also was done by the artist who did the earlier UAV release for Mechagodzilla, which was another magnificent gem of a cover, wouldn't you say? And I think that'll about do it here. Were there any covers that you liked or absolutely hated? If so, let me know in the comments. And on that, I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Godzilla is alive on video. Godzilla, buy a Tuesday on video cassette and DVD.